Good morning, students. Today we will be discussing about tinea, tapeworm. Tinea solium is an acylomate segmented ribbon shaped intestinal parasite in man. It is included in phylum Platyhelminthes and class is Toda. Tinea solium is a common endoparasite found in the intestine of man who eats pork, the flesh of pig, as his food. Myself, Dr. Balram Sai, Assistant Professor in Geology, Government Dunga College, Bikane. Tinea, tapeworm. First, we will discuss about its classification. Phylum Platyhelminthes, class Cystoda, order Tineoidea, genus Tinea, species Solium. In Tinea Solium, we will be discussing about its habit and habitat, its body structure which is divided into three parts that is the scolex part next strobila or body segments in the upcoming slides we will discuss one by one first is the habit and habitat tinea solium the pork tapeworm of man as adult lives in the intestine of man leading an endoparasitic life its life history is completed in two hosts that is digenetic, man being the primary host and pig as the secondary host. Except the adult various stages of its life history are passed in the body of secondary host. Other animals like goat, cattle, horse and monkey may also serve as secondary host. Tinea solium is however reported from those parts of the world where pork is eaten either raw or improperly cooked, especially in the European countries. Since it lives in adult stage in the intestine of man, it causes injuries to mucous membrane lining the alimentary canal where it adheres by its collex part. It may even cause mechanical injury by obstructing the passage of alimentary canal and causes abdominal pains, weakness, loss of weight and excessive appetite. However, Disease caused by this worm is called teniasis. Next is the body structure. Body structure is discussed in the three subheadings that is the scolex, neck, strobila or body segments. In the upcoming slides we will discuss each region in detail. Collex. The anterior end of the body of tinea has a knob like scolex part. The scolex is smaller than the head of a pin about 1 mm in diameter. This is the tinea solium scolex. A part showing the scolex magnified. B the frontal view of scolex, C the small hook and D the large hook. Now we will discuss in detail about the scolex part. The scolex is smaller than the head of a pin about 1 mm in diameter with a cup like four muscular circles having radial muscles and an anterior round prominence. The rostellum having about 22 to 32 curved chitinous hook in two circles. This is the rostellum part, and here you can see the four circles first, second, third, and fourth. Two rows, rows of hooks are present that is the small hook, and this is the larger hook. The chitinous hooks in two circles 
the inner circle with larger hooks and the outer circle with the smaller ones. The long and the short hooks alternate with each other as you can see in the picture. This is the small hook and this is the large hook. Again large hook, small hook and these are arranged in the alternate pattern. Each hook is made of a base by which it fixes a handle. This is the handle which is directed towards the apex and the conical and the conical blade directed outwardly. The rostellum can be protruded slightly. The scolex with its suckers and hook is an organ of attachment to the intestinal wall of the host, thus work, working as an organ of adhesion or hold fast. The scolex part is sometimes wrongly referred to as the head, but it cannot be the head because it is neither related to food perception nor an organ of catching the food. Next is the neck. Behind the scolex is a thin, small, narrow, unsegmented neck which grows continuously and proliferates, proglotids by transverse fission or asexual budding. Therefore, this region is called the growth zone, area of proliferation or budding zone. Next is the strobula or body segments. The neck is followed by a flattened ribbon-like body. A proglotid is one complete unit of the body having a complete set of genitalium and surrounding tissue. The linear arrangement or repetition of these units is called proglotization. The proglotids internally remain connected together by muscles, excretory vessels and nerve cords. However, proglotids are not metameric segments like those of annelids arthropods and other animals because these are independent, self-contained units, each with a complete set of reproductive organs, both male and female, and a part of excretory and nervous system, and they are formed at the zone of proliferation situated anteriorly behind the scolex. Therefore, the youngest proglotid is next to the neck and the oldest at the posterior end of the strobula. The proglotids in a mature tapeworm are however differentiated into three kinds. First is the immature. The proglotids just behind the neck, here you can see this is the scolex part and this, this is the neck part and just behind the neck, these are the immature proglotids and they are devoid of reproductive organs and are broader than long and are called immature proglotids and their number ranges 200 approximately. Next is the mature. After the immature proglotids starts the mature proglotids. These are 100 to 150 in number. After immature proglotids Mature proglotid starts and these bear male reproductive organs and these are pushed back. They develop female reproductive organs also. Thus the mature proglotids are hermaphrodite and they number about 300 to 400. The mature proglotids are squarish in shape which is easily visible in the picture. You can see the shape is almost square like. Next is the gravid. 
these proglottids these are the gravid proglottids these are the oldest and towards the posterior side of the strobila and include nearly 150 to 200 proglottids these segments are longer than their breadth and no reproductive organs are found in them they contain only branched uterus packed with fertilized eggs in fact the proglottids of strobila widen gradually along their length from anterior to posterior side. The proglottids bear genital papilla and pore alternating once to right and then to left. In tinea solium, like other tapeworms, the gravid proglottids are regularly cut off either singly or in group of two to five proglottids from the posterior end of the strobila and this process is termed as apolysis. These detached proglottids are passed out of the host during defecation along with the fecal matter. The phenomenon of apolysis is significant because it helps in transferring the developing embryos to the outside from the body of primary host so that they can find a secondary host and it also keeps the size of strobila restricted within a limit due to continuous proliferation of new proglottids from the neck region. If we talk about the strobular body segments, main features are differentiated into three immature just behind the neck and devoid of reproductive organs. Next is the mature proglottids which are square in shape and are hermaphrodite in nature that is both male and female reproductive organs are present in these proglottids and the third is the gravid proglottids which are the oldest and present towards the posterior side of the organism. Thanks a lot for paying attention and in the upcoming lectures we will discuss more about the body wall of tinea solium and other systems such as respiration, nervous and excretory systems of tinea solium. Thanks a lot.